This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take antique planes and get them back into working condition. Let's talk about scrub planes. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, wooden body scrub planes are made from uh, smooth planes. Um, they are used to <clears throat> rough out uh, a lot of material very quickly. Uh, so, for instance, you have a quarter inch that you want to take off the edge of a board. Um, you can walk it over to your table saw and rip it. Uh, or you can just grab your scrub plane and in about the same amount of time, um, remove all that material. Uh, another example would be if you've got a high spot on a board uh, and you don't have a planer, uh, you can hit it with a scrub plane before you smooth it down with a jack plane or a smoothing plane. You're not gonna find them listed in the old catalogs like Baldwin and Greenfield. Uh, that's because you made your own when the sole on your smooth plane wore down and the mouth got too big to be useful for delicate work anymore. Um, they are, they're not very versatile. They do one thing, but they do one thing really well. Um, I love mine. So let's take a look at the uh, this smooth plane that we're gonna be converting today. Uh, it's in really great condition. Um, the body looks great, the wedge looks great. Uh, it was made by Herman Chapin, Chapin, not sure how to say his last name, uh, under his Union Factory brand. Uh, so somewhere between 1828 and about 1860, um, this would have been made. Um, I chipped off the tip of the cheek right before I started filming this. I'll have to glue that back on. It's mainly cosmetic. Um, yeah, the wedge is in fantastic condition. It looks barely used. Um, I mean, it's got cosmetic blemishes on it, but the wood is great. Um, the iron is got a big chip out of it, um, which is one of the reasons I chose to use this or to convert this uh, plane. Um, so you notice on it, it already has um, a pretty pronounced camber, which you normally see for a smoothing plane. Um, but we're gonna increase that dramatically. Um, the, since you're taking out so much material using a scrub plane, uh, what you really don't wanna do is leave, you know, corner marks from your iron um, that you're gonna have to then try to get rid of using a different plane, like a jack plane or a smooth plane. Um, so by putting a really pronounced camber on there, um, you ensure that it's this sort of gentle groove that you're removing, um, which the, the profile of you'll be able to, to erase later on um, with another plane. Um, chip breaker looks fine and good, uh, so let's get to work on this thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out um, the new uh, curve that we want on the iron. So what I'm going to do is just mark how wide our blade is. Um, I've heard everything from like a three inch radius to a seven inch radius. Um, I think what matters most is that you is that it is it's just it's really pronounced uh, six inches because I don't know six inches uh, so that seems like a good idea to me um, so just take the compass and scratch in make sure I'm just eyeballing the center there um, gonna scratch in the curve Use a pencil to mark it in and then cut it out. So now I have my template for what I want my iron to look like. So now I'm going to put this up on to the iron um, and take a marker and just mark on the iron what this curve needs to look like. And because of that chip 
on the iron, I'm kind of having to do this a little bit further back probably than you normally would. So now we're going to take it to the belt sander, um, um, dipping it in water every once in a while. Um, really don't want to get this thing overheated because um, I was using such a crappy little belt sander, it never really heated up at all. Uh, it stayed cool, but dipping it in water occasionally just just to double check. Um, this took longer than, like I said, it was it's, it's not a very powerful sander, so grinding this down took probably five minutes. Um, but I was also trying to be pretty pretty careful with it and have a very light touch. Um, so once I got it ground down, decided to throw it in the vapor rust, clean it up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> didn't really need much work. A little scrubbing, a um, little wire brush, a little, uh, little steel wool. And then we move on to setting a bevel on this. Um, so the trick with this is when you're dealing with big, you really pronounced camber like that, is just rocking the, the iron back and forth um, as you um, move it up and down the, your stone, your sandpaper, whatever you're using. Um, so a couple strokes on the left, a couple strokes halfway to the center, a couple strokes in the center, same thing on the right side, uh, just back and forth and back and forth, uh, rocking and rocking and rocking. Um, because this is so um, pronounced, it's you definitely don't really need to go all the way to the corners. You will never, those will never touch, the, never touch wood. Um, so you don't have to kill yourself on that. Um, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you notice I used to do sandpaper um, for sharpening, and I decided to drink the Kool-Aid that uh, Stumpy Nubs was selling and switch to um, this diamond um, plate setup uh, and the liquid that they use and everything, or in the liquid that they sell. And so far, I really like it. Um, I feel like the, I think it's just because maybe I'm still breaking it in. It, um, it seems like it kind of clogs. Um, so, but I think it's also probably me just getting used to the, um, let's put a little bit of a back level on it using the ruler trick. Although I'm just gonna use a little piece of cardboard instead. And then on to the strop. Shave off a little hair. Not too worried about the corners. have pretty quick and easy uh, setup here to put it to work. Um, chip breaker sits very far back. Um, since we're taking out really big deep shavings we're not really worried about tear out. Um, you can see there that I've glued the, the tip of the cheek back on, um, the tooth or whatever we want to call it. adjusted really quickly um, and it was ready to go. So let's say, I don't know, what is that, quarter inch? Let's take a quarter inch off. And maybe I should have started timing this. all off. Um, those shavings are super thick, 
super, uh, super chunky. Pretty quick, uh, easy conversion. Um, just making adjustments to the iron. Didn't need to flatten the sole, didn't need to tweak anything. Um, this thing is in great condition anyways, but even if it had been junkier, I still would have left it. I still would have left it alone. Um, what matters is the, um, what matters is the iron, um, the camber on the iron, and um, the fact, obviously, that the plane is functional overall. Um, but, I think a really fun, uh, little fun project. Um, something I would definitely suggest doing. You can get a cheap, cheap coffin plane like this online on eBay for, you know, ten bucks or something like that, and it, you can turn it into a um, little scrub plane without without very much work. I mean, overall that took what? Uh, yeah, you can see the how thick those shavings are. You know, it took what? you know, 20 minutes at the most to do. Hope you liked the video. Uh, got some more coming up. Um, hopefully a little bit more regular. Um, gonna do another jack plane here coming up. We've got um, some rabbit planes that I really wanna work on um, and get going. And maybe even a beading plane. Uh, those are supposed to be pretty tricky. Um, so we'll try maybe one of those here in the in the near future. Um, if you like this, like, subscribe, yada yada yada. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.